Okay. We are ready. So welcome to FM Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. Um, as you may recognize, there's a new voice um, coming into play today. So my name is Tori. I am the office coordinator for Fluid Mechanics. Um, today and John and I are going to be tag teaming this together. So as always, the two most valuable things that you will ever possess are the ideas and the time to carry them out. Um, right now, we do definitely have plenty of time, and what we want to do is provide you with some of those ideas. Uh, this Facebook Live series is designed to give you the information that you need to accelerate your ability to perform now and prepare yourself to get back into the swing of things, whether you are a swimmer, an athlete of any kind, or pretty much anybody. Great, so uh, today we're gonna start off with our, our story time real quick. Um, <clears throat> got a, a little bit of information for you on that. Uh, if you guys don't know me, I'm John Waldman. I'm the president of Fluid Mechanics. And uh, I'm glad to have Tori with me here today to, to do this program. It's a, a really neat program on nutrition for high performance athletes. Um, but uh, basically it's covering um, the fuels, which is sleep, hydration, nutrition, and oxygen. And uh, along with one of those stories, um, or, or, or along that, that line of the fuels, um, years ago, I remember hearing a, a story of a great athlete from, he was an Olympian uh, from, uh, from Canada. And I had a lot of Canadian swimmers on our team. So he, they told me this story and it was really interesting. Um, he went to uh, Cal Berkeley, I believe. And he uh, was a fantastic swimmer, one of the top swimmers in the world. And that year, um, it, after he had, had swum so well in the Olympics, the next year, he uh, decided he was going to start and he took a bridge and playing bridge. And so he was playing the game of bridge with all of his, his, his friends. And they were staying up. If you ever play bridge, a lot of times you'll stay up till the middle of the night doing it. And you're staying up every night, in the middle of the night, playing this bridge. And they're really having a great time. And the coach didn't realize that this was happening. So at the end of the year, when he went to, to race, um, he didn't qualify for NCAA championships. He wasn't fast enough. Now, here's a guy that's one of the top swimmers in the world, one of the, the you know, top swimmers in the Olympics. I think he was like a silver medalist. And he now doesn't qualify for NCAA championships. And then what happened was they found out, the coach asked him, you know, what's, what's going on that's different than was last year? And well, just the only thing you could think of is that he's playing bridge. And he says, and he was staying up all night long. And what was happening was he's losing his sleep. Now, if you look at sleep, sleep is one of the one of the four fuels, right? We have sleep, hydration, nutrition, and oxygen. So if we look at if you deprive somebody of oxygen, they'll die normally in, in a few minutes, right? Where if you look at right hydration. It'll be days, nutrition, it'll be weeks. And if you deprive them of sleep, they'll die within months. And just think about that. So sleep is one of the, the fuels. And he was depriving his body of that ability to rest and, right, and regenerate and heal. And it impacted him so much that he didn't, he wasn't able to actually even qualify for NCAAs when he would have probably in the past have won them. As soon as they found that out, they, they said, okay, you know what? You got to stop doing that. Stop playing that, that game. Stop staying up at night. And he did. And the next year he won, I believe if I'm correct, the story was at least that he won two events that were off events in NCAA championships. So he didn't just swim better. He actually now won in two events that weren't even his events. So he was a great swimmer. Um, he just was, was, you know, too much into playing bridge and lose, and, and that cost him his sleep. And one thing that, uh, an, another step is uh, my dad always had told me uh, for years and years, I always uh, had a lot of great experience with him. He says, two things that you should never go cheap on. One is your food that you put in your body. He says, never go cheap on your food. He says, because what you, right, what you eat, you're kind of, you are what you eat. 
And if you're gonna eat cheap food, right, that's gonna cheapen the materials that are in your body. And if those materials become, you know, your, your body and, and join your body to, to become who you are, that could be a problem. The other one is, is you don't wanna go cheap on your doctor. You might go cheap like you get a discount brain surgeon. <laughs> I would be careful with that, right? So you, you wanna be careful with, you know, at least those two things. Don't go cheap on your food. Don't go cheap on your, on your doctor. The things that are, you know, in, really working on your body, the internal side of your body, you don't wanna go cheap on it, if that makes sense. You don't wanna get uh, a big sale on that um, and, and see if you can get the least expensive. They say sometimes the most expensive advice you can get is free advice. Because if this makes sense, sometimes that free advice might not be not might not, not be accurate. So you get this free, you save, save that money, you get this free advice, and now you start pursuing this wrong, maybe possibly the wrong advice. Doesn't mean you gotta pay for every every bit of advice you get, but if you have something you're gonna really pursue heavily. You really want expert advice, whether you have to pay for it or not, you want expert advice. Because everybody will give their opinion to you and so they'll give it to you for free a lot of times. But when you get that, you want to make sure it's accurate before you start to go down that road and spend a lot of time, effort, money trying to pursue that. You want to make sure you're going in the right direction. So there are a couple things that we would love for you to watch at some point this week to kind of supplement what we're talking about today. So as usual, we recommend that you head over to the FM Discovery Center. You would go to fluidmechanics.net, FM online training, and then the Discovery Center itself. You'll see there that there are hundreds of videos that you would be able to watch. This week, we've got three recommended topics. The first one, identifying opportunities. The second one, climbing the ladder to success. And then finally, valleys and peaks. So when you go on to the Discovery Center, what you will be able to do is type the titles of these videos into the search bar. You'll bring them right up. All three of them are fantastic. Great. And Okay, so today we're gonna to start into the cornerstones of performance just to orient ourselves as to what we're gonna be uh, looking at. And I think this is the first time, if I'm right, that we've covered fuels. So we're in the fuels category over here with the green girl, her name is Nitrogen, all right? And so we're gonna be digging in there. And so on today's uh, presentation is nutrition for high performance athletes. We're gonna reveal the triad of nu nutrition first. Then we're gonna identify what type of fuel to put in your body. And then we're gonna show you how to eat like an athlete. And by the way, if you're not an athlete and you just wanna improve your, your eating patterns, this is a fantastic way to do it. It's gonna reveal a lot. It's, it's really gonna zoom in on the, the, um, the senses and the emotion that, that, that occurs um, while you're eating. So I think it'll help a lot. So let's dig in now. So the first question I have is, do you eat like an athlete or do you eat like a teenager? And that's if you're an adult, uh, a child, but how do you eat? I think if I'm right, the four basic food groups of the teenagers, like hamburgers, French fries, Snickers bar, pizza, right, soda, things like this, anything that, that's sweet and, and tends to be like a little greasy sometimes and, or salty, right? And, and we tend to wanna, that, that's kind of our taste buds leading us forward to whatever it is that we're gonna consume. And uh, when we used to do this, we used to have a, a swim camp. It was an absolutely fantastic swim camp. And one of the many programs that we offered inside that swim camp was when we ate meals, each meal was an educational program to transition into eating like an athlete, right? So, so when they went in, right, they would, they would start off by projecting what kind of fuel they wanted to put in their body, right? And little by little, they would run... And, and start, so the first couple meals, we'd let them just eat, right? And just kind of see what they're eating. And, and they would kind of look at that, say, okay, yeah, this is what I'm eating. And then we'd start into the program itself. And little by little, we transition to understanding how to fuel your body instead of just eating, you know, all kinds of junk food, things like that, that may actually be heavily impacting the fuels that you're processing. After the program that we give, and I'm going to give you a little bit of that program today, 
after that program that we gave, one time we got a phone call from a, from a parent of one of their young younger swimmers. I think he was maybe eight, nine years old. And they called us up and they said, we just had to tell you that our whole household is eating differently. Our child who's eight years old is not allowing us to eat junk food anymore. He says, it's just not the correct way of eating and that we should be fueling our bodies. He says, oh my gosh, he said, you, you turned the house all around in a good way. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. So during the, the camp, um, there, we, would, uh, we would run our camp and there was other camps that ran as well in this university that were running uh, the camp in. And at the beginning of the week, we would watch, and again, like I said, we'd be kind of taking a course and we watched the football camp. And the football camp was very big, much bigger than the swim camp was. And you watch them all kind of eating whatever they could. And next thing you know, you'd look over and say, and, and there was different lines. There were a place that had entrees or a place that had salad. There was a, what we call the grease line, right? And, and, and there's a, a few other uh, uh, outlets for food there. And so what would happen is in, in the beginning of the week, the first thing we would notice before we'd actually go up and get our own food is that the football players were all up in the grease line. They were consuming the hamburgers, the hot dogs, the french fries, anything they get, pizza or anything they could get that was greasy and, and, and taste good. And instead of like fueling their body, they were just right, satisfying their taste buds. And so while we're going along, we're teaching this course. And this happened numerous times. I was very surprised that, that they came over and they said, is it possible? He said, we're seeing you guys learning here and, and, and we're, we're just eating. And he said, is, there, is it possible that we could actually have our kids attend your program for, for nutrition? He said, it's so good. I was listening in the other day and it was really, really helpful. So almost, uh, I think with maybe four or five different years um, they, they, in a row, they would come in and they would just listen to our program. So this is some of the program that you're gonna get here. And, and by the end of the week, the grease line was empty. There was still food there, but the people weren't picking that food up. So their, their football players were starting to eat healthier, getting salads, things like this, and getting into different lines or recognizing their eating patterns weren't going to fuel their body to become a great athlete. So what we use is what's called the triad of nutrition. And we use what's called the QPI index, which is quantity, preparation, and ingredients. So you can see these red, right? Quantity, preparation, and ingredients, right? And there's a balance of how much quantity, right? How much of the food you get, what kind of preparation that you have and how you prepare it, and then the ingredients that are in it. Again, quantity, how much, right? So let's say you got a, you know, strawberries, but you got two pounds of strawberries, right? And then you prepare. So the ingredients would be the strawberries, the quantity would be two pounds, and the preparation Let's say you dipped them in, in chocolate, right? So you can turn good foods bad quickly. Now there's three aspects that you're looking for really, protein, fats, and carbohydrates, right? And what they do for you. So for instance, carbs are, are burned normally quickly. And so they, they fuel your daily activities, right? Whereas protein has a lot of muscle building qualities to it. So when you feel that, Doc Councilman used to say, you know, you eat a steak, uh, you know, on, on, in, in, in for dinner, 18 hours later, you still have steak in your stomach. So if you still have steak in your stomach, that means it didn't yet get processed. So it takes a long time to, to break down that protein, whereas carbs are broken down almost immediately and push right in, depending on the type of carb, if it's complex or if it's simple, and put immediately to work. But if it doesn't get to work, then it can be stored in your body. And a lot of times it's stored as a fat in your body. So it's important to know, like if you're eating carbs, right, then you want to be working those off. If you're not exercising, right, so let's say you put, put in, um, you know, a certain amount of, of carbs, you want to be exercising to take those carbs off and to fuel that body. It's fueling your exercise. If you don't exercise a lot, then you probably shouldn't eat a lot. 
right? Whereas if you are exercising a lot, you might need a little bit more, a little more calories to be able to, to uh, you know, sustain that exercise. So if you're an athlete, you're going to need probably more of that than you would if you are more sedentary and not moving around as much. And so also protein, if you want to, right, if you want to build that muscle, you have to have more protein to be able to build that. But again, you don't want to go overboard. You want to have some kind of balance, if this makes sense. A balanced diet is normally, you know, good, good, solid recommendation for those who are healthy. Okay, so now what we're going to do is what we did was we rated our grade of fuel, right? So to rate, and right, and then this is your fuel selection. So the materials you put in your body are broken down to create energy. These materials are what your body uses to fuel itself. So to keep this super simple, when, when my daughter was, my first daughter was three years old, <clears throat> we used to ask, and we're doing that with my second daughter, who's now three. <clears throat> we used to ask her, and we're asking our, 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 our daughter now, our, our three-year-old, is, is the food you're eating, whatever, let's say it's a strawberry, is that strong or weak? That keeps it super simple. And that's what you can start that with yourself too. It's very simple is what I'm eating, right? I have water here. Is that strong or weak? Well, that's about the strongest thing that you can consume right there, right? An apple, strong or weak. And you're just looking for, is it strong or weak? How about bacon? Bacon strong, definitely bacon is weak, right? And definitely an apple, uh, uh, broccoli, things like these, these are strong. And so it's really easy and they are able to tell and, and you can say, oh, cheese, is that strong or weak? Well, <clears throat> it's a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little bit weak, a little bit strong. There, there's a balance there. So we started to, to get a, if you want to be more exact, just than strong or weak, you can use a system of a fuel rating chart. You can see over here, we have this fuel rating chart, which rates your fuel from bottom to top as super low, low, moderate, high and super high. So we've got five categories here. We have the quantity here, right? So one pound plus we're considering at this point in the, the super low category, right? Whereas a three ounce serving is more considered kind of a super high category. And then you add that to the way you cook it, right? So if you took a, an apple and you didn't cook that apple, right? Um, or you could take, uh, for instance, now some things are, are better. You have to cook it, right? You don't want to uh, have a lot of food that, that, that might have uh, bacteria or something like this, that, right? But generally, boiling is considered normally a little more healthy than frying, especially deep frying where the fat really gets saturated into the, into the food that you're going to eat. So you're not only eating the food, but you're also eating maybe breading that's on it and things like this, right? So, and, then, and then the saturate and, and it absorbs that fat in it. Okay. And then, right, you've got your ingredients here, which are so important, right? So bacon is way down here. You can see eggs kind of climbing up the list, pasta kind of in the moderate category. And again, depending on your, your intake of that, if you're taking in a pound of pasta, that can do, you know, more damage sometimes than it can do good. And then you're up here in the, and so this, a three ounce uncooked broccoli, broccoli is considered to be one of the, the best foods in the world, but so is so is strawberries. Hi, Dad. So, hi, Dad. you go. Quick. Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much. This is my daughter, Sianna, in case you guys haven't met her. She just wanted to say hi and be on, on TV. Can you say hi? Can you wave? There you go. Okay. You're going to hop right back out. Okay. Go see mommy. Thanks. There you go. No, I'm, I'm trying to. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Always so, uh, in the <laughs> yeah. Yep, she's a fast one. <laughs> oh, she is. So anyway, here we go. Um, let's see. So generally, that's how you could rate your fuel. Let's go to the next one, and we have a three-step method to high octane fuel. So the three-step method to get your high octane fuel. Number one is you want to project. And that's to see it before it happens. So projection, we say uh, sight is what you see with your eyes and vision is what you see with your mind. So projecting is basically seeing something in your mind and it's before it happens. So that's a visualization, right? 
You're visualizing your mind before it happens. So you're going to pro project a nutritional grade of fuel before you select your meal, which means simply this. You decide what octane fuel you want to put in your body prior to going and getting that food. So before you get to dinner, before you smell dinner, and that's going to, we're going to come up with something just in a moment that'll help you understand that. Before you smell dinner, and that's a big deal, or see it, you want to make sure that you start off by projecting. So I'm going to get an average level of five or an average level of four. Not many people project they want an average level of one. I want bacon, a more than a pound of bacon that, that's fried. Wow, okay. Well, if you knew that a pound of bacon that's fried is, right, is, is as bad as it is for you, probably wouldn't do it, right? It's one of the lowest characters out there. If you're gonna have bacon, right, then you should eat probably a lot less. And, right, and, and so you, you, you don't want as much and because you have to counteract it with the other fuels you eat. Because if you wanted to get a four, you can't eat a lot of bacon because you'd have to counteract it with so much quantity of the other like salads and the, you know spinach and things like that, that it wouldn't, wouldn't work. You'd have to eat too much volume, total volume for your body. So you can't eat a, a huge amount of bacon and still be hitting high octane fuel or, or, or definitely not super high. Okay. If this makes sense, then you guide it, which means you're going to see it while it happens. So first you're projecting it before it happens. Now, so you're saying I want a number four, right? Average of four. So if I eat something a little lower, then I'm gonna have to get something a little bit higher. If I eat too much of one thing, I gotta eat a little less of another thing. So hopefully you're gonna eat more of the healthy food and less of the unhealthy food, all right? And then you balance it. So if you said, I'm gonna go in and um, get a four and you all got like a four and a half, you even, you know, you guided very, very well. If you, and, and if you, if, uh, you'd have actually be guiding better if you said four and got four, right? But if you said you're gonna get three and you ended up getting a, a 1.5, then you didn't guide well, right? So you want to use the projection. And then once you get in with that food and you smell it, right? And that's going to be a big deal. And you smell it. That's when you go into emotional mode. And that's where things change. So you've got to stay with, okay, I said I was getting a four, a four. Okay, so I got this really tasty thing. Now I got to counteract it with a four or a five because I want to come out at, at four. Right. So, I gotta, so you want to balance your diet to achieve your goal. So you're using the, the combination, right, the, the tri triad of nutrition while you're selecting your meal. Remember what the triad of nutrition was is this. Right. Quantity, preparation, ingredients like that. Okay. So now after your meal is over, this is a really quick, and it doesn't have to take long. It's going to be easy. Reflect after it happens. So, right? So you project, see it beforehand, before you ever smell it. Guide, right? See it while it happens. Make sure you're staying in line with what you wanted to, to, to get. And then reflect after it happens on what, right, what you ate and compare it to your initial projection. Did I get what I wanted to, right? And, and if you didn't, then you need to be more strict in your guiding phase. So there's three phases of dinner, right? Or of lunch or of breakfast is a projection of any meal. Project it, guide it, and reflect it. How many times do you get, after, get done with a meal and go, man, I wish I hadn't eaten all that? What are we talking about? Well, we're talking about quantity usually, right? I, I, should, I ate too much. Right? How many, how many times do you realize, you know, I really shouldn't be eating this fried fish. Fish is great. Instead of fried fish, if you get the broiled fish, that might be better. Right? Try to upgrade it a little bit. The grilled fish, something like this. 
Okay, here we go. We're going to move on to the next slide. Now, this is really important to understand because this changes everything. So this is what's called a powerful sense, right? Understanding the link between smell and taste. This is where it becomes emotionalized by your senses. So you want to do it logically, right? And there's a difference to us between logical and emotional. Logical is how you think to us and emotional is how you feel. Your senses immediately go into all kinds of emotion, right? You smell something, you see it, you taste it, right? You hear it going and, and oh, that sounds good or that smells good, right? If you hear the crinkling bag, right? Oh, oh it's chips, great. You don't wanna race over to those chips. Okay, so your sense of smell. Just to, to give you an idea, the sense of smell is so much more powerful than we know. If you smell the perfume or cologne of your old boyfriend or girlfriend, this is maybe 20 years later, and, and it was your, your first love at one point, right? And, and, and you smell that perfume that isn't even on that person anymore, it's, right? Somebody else is wearing it. Boy, that could bring you back, in, right, to those feelings that you had when you were younger, just like that. So it's very important that knowing how powerful smell is. If you smell your mom's cooking, maybe years after she's passed on, you're later in life, but you smell something that smells just like your mom's cooking, right? All of a sudden, boom, you're brought back to that. Like, wow, that's, you, you have to have that. So your sense of taste, by the way, is heavily linked to your smell. And you notice here we have... A, a picture of a nose that's smelling the apple and right, the tongue's probably tasting the apple. And you can see how they're coming up here and they're gonna combine before they go into your short-term memory. And if those two merge like that, right? If you ever had a cold, you know food doesn't taste the same when you can't also smell it, right? So it's very difficult sometimes to cook and cook well if you have a cold because you can't really right, smell and taste and get the, the, the taste right sometimes. If you're a cook that, that tends to taste its, you know, taste your food. Okay, so if this makes sense, your smell and your taste are very heavily linked. So before you smell it, before you taste it, and I would say to some point before you see it, right? Before the senses go to work and emotionalize it is where you want to project. You say, I want this fuel to go in my body. That makes all the difference setting a goal before you get in the emotionalized situation. Then once you get in there, staying connected to saying the goal and then doing it. Remember last week we went over say it and do it. And for your internal reputation, if you are strong-willed, you say, I'm going to get a four, and then your internal rep reputation needs to go to work to say, I said it, and now I'm going to do it. And when you do that, it's th it changes everything, right? Your internal reputation. If you see yourself as weak, you'll go in and you'll say, ah, you know what? I said it, but I'm not necessarily very attached to that, those words or to those thoughts. So I'm going to just go ahead and get that, you know, big piece of cake or all, you know, and, and in addition to that, you know, put some, put some whipped cream on that. And right now you're just going wild. Now, if you said you want to get a two because this is your, you know, meal for, for to get a two, that's, that's fine because that's what you're projecting. And then you can measure this against, you know, the, the weight you want to lose or the, right, how many calories you want to intake, things like this. Okay, so the, your emotion is the most powerful thing about you, right? So think about your favorite, think about one of your favorite foods, right? Right now, I want you to think, just imagine one of your favorite foods. I think mine's going to be steak. I love steak, right? So immediately, as soon as you start to really think into that, you're going to get an emotional reaction, almost like drool, right? Your mouth starts wanting to, to have that food. And smelling it creates an even stronger emotional reaction, right? So the, the thought of the food, instead of the thought of the fuel, and the grade of fuel is a real defining, differentiating idea. Start if you want to control your, your, your intake, if you want to control and fuel your body properly, 
start with the logical side of rating, you know, have a fuel and worst comes to worst, go back to strong versus weak. Boom. Right now that's strong. That's weak. That's an easy one. You don't have to count all the details that way. Right. But that's a very important. So your emotion, the most powerful thing about you, you're the most powerful thing, powerful living being that's ever stepped foot on this planet. So your will is going to be very important in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The trick, again, is to decide what your fuel level is going to be before you smell it. So if you get near a restaurant, you notice a lot of times they're, they're pushing that smell out in a steakhouse or a, you know, like a, any type of, uh, you know, where they're cooking like hamburger place, things like that. They're going to be trying to push that smell out. And the reason why they're pushing that smell out to you, got it. Not just because they have to get rid of the smell. They want you to smell that because you're going to get emotional right away. Well, I got to have that, right? You ever see the, the cartoon where the, where, you know, the, the cat smells the pie or something like that. And he's floating right over to the pie. Well, that's way too true for us, right? And our taste buds are then leading the way, not our logic. So now for the FM, FM insiders, if you wanna be an FM insider, do this right now. You're gonna get a nutrition chart for high performance athletes. Um, you wanna just send an email, right? You're gonna send an email to swim at fluidmechanics.net. All right. And it says in here, do you eat like an athlete or do you eat like a teenager? And what it's going to do, it's going to give you a chart and the challenge, right? Our FM live challenge right now is to use the chart for six meals within the next week. Right? So here's your meals. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to project just X off and put the number that you want to get. So the projection could be a four or a three, then guide it. And then reflect. So, so, so you get in there, right? And you say, okay, yeah, I got a, I got a, okay, I got a four. I projected a four, I got a four. And then you reflect on it when you get out. Okay, you know, I did a great job and congratu congratulate yourself, right? You can also go project, you know what? I want to get a two. And then some people like to, to outperform. So no, I'm actually getting a three while they're guiding. I'm going to do better. And then you reflect, you know, I did a, a, a really great job. But if you projected a four and you got a one and a half, you got to reflect back and say, you know what? I got to be stronger will. I can get what I want to have, have happen in life. So I had a woman years ago. So, so send that in right now if you want to just say, just by the way, just say, um, you know, send me the nutrition chart. I want to be an FM insider. Send that now and they'll send it out to you right away so you can try that out. Um, but I had a woman years ago and I was lifeguarding and I, I looked over at this woman and she was um, stretching in the water like this and she was stretching over here like this and, and, and I watched her for about 20 minutes she was stretching and I went over to her and we, we had a lifeguard contract and one of our lifeguards hadn't attended so I, I went in and, and covered them and I went over and I said hi ma'am how you doing she's good 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 I said what are you doing there and she says um I'm, uh, I'm working out. I said, you're working out. She had a book next to her, like a magazine. I said, what, what are you doing? She said, I, I'm, I'm working out. I, I, I was reading this magazine and, and, and it's telling me what to do. And I, I said, it's telling you to stretch so you could lose weight? Yep. She says, it says right in the book that if you stretch, you'll lose weight. And I said, let me see that book. And I picked up the book and I said, and I, I said, I apologize, but I'm gonna have to toss this in the garbage. I toss in the garbage, She's like, what are you doing? That's my book. And I said, yep, it's your book. And I said, you know what that book's telling you? It's giving you the wrong idea. It's driving you in the wrong direction. I said, let me ask you a question. How much weight have you lost? And she was at the time somewhere over, uh, I think she was about four or 500 pounds. She's a big lady. And she said, well, I I've been doing this for about three months. And she says, you know, I haven't lost a pound. So I could tell you why you haven't lost a pound. Why is that? She says, because she says, I don't understand. She says, every time I go through here and she says, I, I, I do this workout, I get all excited that I'm losing weight and I go home and I eat and I celebrate with, I, I eat a cake. I said, you eat, what, a slice of cake? She said, no, I eat the whole cake. 
And I say, you're celebrating the fact that you're working out and losing weight by eating a cake. Wow. And she said, yeah, she said, I'm not losing any weight. She said, I don't understand. It's been three months. I said, throw this magazine away. I said, I'm going to tell you what, grab this kickboard. She picked up the kickboard and I said, you start kicking back and forth. And she says, will that help me lose weight? I said, well, you think of it this way. I said, when you get to 20 minutes of nonstop kicking, you don't have to kick hard, but just keep going and going and going for 20 minutes. I said, when you get to that point where you've, you've done that, right? And you've gotten 20 minutes, that's when you start burning fat. Just think of it this way. It'll help you a lot. I said, so you go 21 minutes, you got one minute of burning fat. You go 22 minutes, you got two minutes of burning fat. Everything else is just build up, right? To get over the norm and just get up to that point. And so anyway, we had another uh, time where somebody couldn't, couldn't attend their lifeguarding. And so I went in, we had a, a, one guy that was missing every once in a while. So I went in and it was probably about, I don't know, three months later, four months later when I went back and I saw this woman and she came in and she was just, she said, I, she says, John, look at me. I'm beautiful. And she was about fr- probably down from 500 to about 280 pounds, 270 pounds. She'd lost almost half of herself, her body. And she says, I feel so beautiful. She says, I know I got a lot of the skin hanging off me. She says, but I'll get rid of it. I'll, I'll do something to do that. But she says, look, I feel so light. And she was so excited about what she was. She says, you know, I'm up to 30 minutes of kicking now. I think I, you know, I, I, I don't often get emotional about that type of thing, but I think I, I definitely got a tear in my eye when she said that because that changed her entire feeling about herself because now she was able to control it, right? So you want to do these things that, that you're able to control and get where you want in life. If you want to lose weight, if you want to, you know, eat better for, for racing, if you want to be healthier, right? You want to start this process and, and we're going to give you permission to go ahead and print that out, use it, give it to your friends if you want to, that might, and, and show them this video, you know, you don't have to tell them, hey, you're already, just show, hey, this might be worthwhile watching. Okay, so today's takeaways um, are, number one, at this point, you should know what the triad of nutrition is. Here it is. It's got a QPI index, quantity, preparation, and ingredients, right? And inside those ingredients, right, are the protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and also in the way you prepare that, right, adds to it, and how much, and right, and you want to balance your diet for what it is that you want to get out of it. Therefore, you should now start to know what type of fuel you want to put, and you'll be able to choose what you want to put in your body. Again, back to here. You want to be able to use strong or weak, which is really simple, or if you want to get more exact, you can use your fuel fuel rating chart. And then the last one here is how to eat like an athlete. And the way you eat like an athlete is you start to fuel yourself for exactly what it is that you want to achieve, right? And you're going to be able to start to, right, do a project guide. And then you're going to reflect to make sure that you're getting the job done. Now, next week, we're going to do something really, really fantastic. It's called the FM productivity model, right? I I, I worked with this uh, actually with with my older daughter to come up with this to help uh, for behavioral modification so we could help her understand and clearly see what we wanted her uh, to achieve, where we wanted her to go. So we're going to define the nine modes of behavior, identify how to progress, from, on, from step to step to get where you want to go and reveal the pathway to becoming significantly more productive and valuable to any team that you're with, whether it's a swim team, a team in business, your family as a team member in your family. This is a great program. Uh, we'll be on next week with it. Um, and, and I think you'll really enjoy it and get a lot out of it. Tori, back to you. All right. So, Thank you so much for joining us today. We would love it if you could let us know how you liked today's show. Give us a comment below, like the page, definitely check out our weekly events as we keep going with this. 
um, share with your friends. Um, and definitely don't forget to visit the website, fluidmechanics.net, get into that FM Discovery Center. There is plenty more extra stuff that you can see there. Keep going. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Have a great one.